It's election season and Christians are at one another's throats on the internet. So I just wanted to come on today and make a quick video about how Jesus is not a Republican or a Democrat. In fact, Jesus is not an American. Jesus is not part of any nation, nor does any particular nation represent his kingdom. As he said to his disciples, they will know you by your love for one another. And yet, I see vicious debates raging online. I've even had someone chase me down to my own YouTube channel from a comment to tear me to pieces for saying what I'm about to say next, which is that the kingdom of God defies every nation state. It defies all boundaries, all political parties, all economic systems, all educational systems, all entertainment and media systems. The kingdom of God, friends, is not of this world. And all of my allegiance, though I am grateful to be a part of a country with religious freedom, and I'm grateful for the people who died to protect that freedom, all of my allegiance is to Christ alone, my King. And that is what every Christian is called to be allied to. We are meant to live apart from the world, loving one another in small communities and churches where we show the world how different we are from them. Yet most of the world wants nothing to do with us. In fact, I didn't either when I didn't understand what the kingdom of God truly was until Christ revealed himself to me in all his glory. And even his glory is not the glory of men in this world. It's not about glory on a battlefield. His glory is his radiant, magnificent beauty that is so captivating it takes hold of you and you cannot ever go in any other direction but to follow him. Most of us are still captives to this world and its systems, and yes, we all have to live a part of it. But that also includes the top-down power hierarchies of not just our governmental systems, but the church system itself, where one or two or a handful of people are at the top, some of whom have great intentions and are very amazing servants of God, but some of whom are just there for the power and control. It's because we've modeled the religious system like every other world system, systems that do not come from God, but from the ruler of this world, who rules by domination, subjugation, and top-down power structures of control, designed to keep us in bondage to this world, living in fear and legalism, versus embracing the new life we receive once we receive the Spirit of God himself, that sets us more and more and more free from all of those systems. Bottom-up servant leadership of Christ is a king who washes the feet of his disciples. It's a king who leads by love. It's a kingdom that is run completely on freedom and total liberty, something few of us have ever truly experienced, no matter what country we're from. So Jesus is not a Democrat or a Republican, and we do not represent his kingdom, brothers and sisters, when we are fighting and bickering and slaughtering one another chopping up his body into tens of thousands of denominational debates, wasting his precious blood, caught up so in our own salvation, we never go into the deeper things of God beyond him rescuing us and everything to do with us, which I call the doctrines of meology. His rule is one of pure, limitless love. His glory is his beauty. His grace is his loving kindness, and that is how he leads. As he said to his disciples, and you will not lord it over one another like the Gentiles do, and yet that's exactly what we do now. Telling people they can't possibly be Christians if they vote for a political candidate, as if we are the ones who judge and weigh hearts for God. Crying out heresy when somebody disagrees with us on a secondary doctrine that has little to nothing to do with the kingdom of God. And so I declare to you that my full allegiance is to Christ Jesus alone. I have lived in many countries throughout the world. I have traveled extensively. I am grateful that America is my home. I'm grateful for the freedoms I have here. I'm grateful for how comfortable my lifestyle is here, but I would give it up all in an instant for him. And regardless of what happens in this election season, I feel no fear, no stress, no anxiety whatsoever because I know who my king is. I know who my Lord is. And I do not expect a flawed human political candidate to save me. In fact, I'm already saved. And the things of this world hold no sway over me. But the Lord is looking for a set-apart people, a remnant among his church, among his body, who are awake, who are willing to follow him no matter where he leads and no matter what the cost. The cost is too high for most of us in America, where the church has become like a corporation, cold, icy, 
led by just a few people while we all sit passively in the pews, muzzled, and maybe that's how we like it. And our leaders bear the brunt and the weight of the entire ecclesia, the entire church, many of whom are burned out, even as so many are true servants of God, and were never meant to bear or carry that much weight themselves. So if all of this is resonating with you and you're still here and you haven't clicked off yet, or you aren't rage posting at me in the comments, I'm going to encourage you to pick up Frank Viola's book, Insurgents, Reclaiming the Gospel of the Kingdom, and give this a read. It will set you free. In it, he talks about how this difference between conservatives and liberals is as old as time itself. Indeed, the Pharisees represented the conservative religious of that time, and the Sadducees, the libertine or liberal religious of that time. And neither side, neither one of those parties, were aligned with Christ. In fact, both sides persecuted him and his true church and that he brought his radical gospel of good news to the world, not just of salvation, which is a shallow way to read the gospels, but of new life and resurrection into new life with him, a new way of living, an alternative society, the ecclesia of God, one that was meant to be an example of an alternative, radical, different kind of society and different kind of life than all of the systems of the world. And so I'll say it again, the kingdom of God is not a politician, a political party, a nation, a government, an economic system, an educational system, a media system, or any other system of this world, friends. The kingdom of God is the opposite of everything in this world. And we have very little examples of that in and of the church itself at the moment. When he called me into his glorious kingdom, a kingdom where we work not to get but to give, not to mass wealth and store up treasures in barns, but to help one another in community, where we all minister to one another, and where we grow together as a body with the Holy Spirit freely expressing himself through us so that we can truly grow and mature as a church and become that example, that light to the world that he intended for us to be so that we can truly draw others, not with spectacles, not with performances, not with pagan rituals that we label the traditions of God that are really just the traditions of men resurrected from the temple priesthood that Jesus himself tore down when he tore that temple veil and tore the temple in Jerusalem down stone by stone in AD 70, where we are the priesthood of all believers, a royal priesthood, as is written in 1 Peter 2.9, a royal priesthood here to reveal the light to the darkness that he is to bear his image into the world his beloved bride whom he sacrificed him for. And I don't know about you, friends, but that's the revolution I'm looking for. And I do not believe that we need another revival in the church. I believe there is a great revolution coming to God's church in the coming years, whether in this world or when this world becomes one with heaven in the new Jerusalem. And what that requires is submitting ourselves, our flesh to his cross over and over and over again until he purifies us, not by our own willpower, which is impossible, which has led to all the corruption in the church system. When we truly allow ourselves to be conformed to his image by the spirit of God working within us, because if it was possible to do it by our own willpower, friends, we would have done it thousands of years ago. The religious Jews would have done it back in the day. No one is good but one, that is God, and we cannot be truly good without him. God bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you. May you allow him to purify and transform your heart that you may lead with love, as is written in 1 John over and over again. Love one another. Stop fighting, stop debating. Love is about understanding and patience. Love never fails, as is written in 1 Corinthians. Many blessings of peace to you and your family. Remember that our Lord is with us even unto the end of the age and will never abandon us. May you feel truly held in his love no matter what's going on in the outside world and learn to thrive with Jesus in spite of it. I'm telling you it's possible because I am and I welcome suffering, trial, and tribulation because they are all for his glory to be revealed through me to this world. My life purpose as a true disciple, a follower of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray that you get there too someday, my friends, even though it may cost you everything. Amen.